everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Community Voices. I'm Cassidy, Senior Strategist of Cultural Partnerships for JD Sports and Finish Line. We're continuing the celebration of Women's History Month. And what, what better way to do it than with the incredible, phenomenal Mina Harris. Hi, Mina. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Always. Um, <laughs> You know, you are the CEO and founder of Phenomenal, NY, New York Times bestselling author, activist, mother. You are all the hats and I feel you do it so well. Um, so just thank you again for being here. It's been a pleasure working with your team and I'm so excited to get started on these questions I have for you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Big fan and I'm excited to be a part of your community today. So thank you. Of course. All right. So to jump off, um, you know, what does Women's History Month mean to you and how have you been celebrating or how do you like to celebrate Women's History Month? I know this sounds so corny, but for me, I'm like Women's History Month, at least that phenomenal in my house. It's every month. Uh, it's every day. So, <laughs> it, you know, I think it's really important to take time and create spaces where we do pause and recognize and celebrate such as, you know, moments like International Women's Day, right, which happened this month and, and dedicating an entire month to to women. Uh, I, I wish that we, we we could do it more and more and not just during one month of the year, right? I, I feel that way about a lot, you know, Black History Month, all of the other moments where we take time to recognize, uh, which is that, you know, the work of equity and inclusivity and, and just creating a more um, equitable world for women is something that we have to do every single day. So it's, it's about, you know, recognizing incredible women who made it, you know, possible for all of us to, to be here doing the work that we're doing today for me to, you know, have started phenomenal and to be doing the work that I'm doing. And so really celebrating that history, I think is super important and recognizing that we would not be here without the fight and the, you know, work of so many incredible female leaders, especially black women activists, you know, who are at the forefront of so many movements who, you know, made it, it possible for us to do what we're doing now. So I think reaching back and recognizing that and celebrating that history is a huge part of what Women's History Month means to me. And also, as I said at the beginning, you know, recognizing that we're doing this work every day and we have a lot more to do, right? And, and so celebrating also, you know, people who are contributing in this moment to women's equality and, you know, really making progress on issues that we know disproportionately affect women. And I think with this pandemic, um, especially, we're now, you know, full year into it and we know that it has had a disproportionate you know impact on women and women of color especially uh women are leaving the workforce in, in record numbers um we have issues with you know folks just trying to survive and um you know women are disproportionately caretakers are providing for their families right and and so i think that it's also an important time to pause and, and think about you know the the ongoing work that we need to do just to uh, make set women up for success, right? And make it possible for them to achieve and to succeed and to thrive, right? Instead of what we're seeing right now, which is really just people trying to survive and get, get through each day. I love all of that. I love that you can take the time to look back and learn more, even though if you've heard about these women from, you know, our history, but you know, you read more and you listen more and you, you continuously, um, learn about what's important to women and moving it forward to future generations and everything you said, I wholeheartedly agree. So thank you for that answer. Um, you know, with that being said, I know you have two beautiful daughters. <laughs> um, what are some things that you are teaching them, you know, during women's history month, or are there any stories that you're telling them that they can take with them, um, you know, forever? Yeah, it's interesting, actually, to the point of, um, you know, recognizing women in history and then also thinking about, you know, people doing the work today and celebrating that as well. I've learned with my, you know, kids that, and it's this concept of representation that you can't be what you can't see. And I've learned as well, even further that like what they see, they want to be. And we have, or we've had a lot of those sort of feminist books of like women in history, right? And um, which are really important, right? And I think um, th it was like the last three to five years that I think they become really, you know, po popular and there's been a lot more of them. But the interesting uh, sort of 
reaction I've seen, at least with our kids and, and others that I've, I've seen are that like, you know, are they real people? Where are they now? Are they alive? And it's like, oh, well, no, but they're really right. important. For this. So like, you know, the history is super important, but kids just absorb so much of what's real and in front of them. And so it just really struck, you know, a chord with me in terms of the importance of, of showing them what's, what's real and possible right now. Right. And, and so my older daughter uh, has been going around for the last two years now saying that she wants to be a president when she grows up and not, or, and an astronaut. And it's because, you know, she saw a bunch of women running for president and she had a kid's book that was about Mae Jemison and she could see herself in Mae Jemison, right. And, and say, oh, I could do that too. I can be an astronaut. And so I say that all that to say that, you know, for us, it is just an ongoing you know, way of how we approach parenting, which is yes, teaching our kids about the history and, you know, women who again made it possible for us to have more equality and, and, you know, progress that we've made, but also focus on the fact that there's still a lot of work to do. And there's incredible people who are alive right now who are, you know, doing that work and represent, you know, so much for all of us in terms of opportunity, um, fighting for equity. And, and again, just showing them, you know, what they can be and, and what, uh, you know, the, what will be open to them and available to them, you know, when they grow up and enter the, the working world or, you know, pursue whatever ambitions they, they want to pursue, that there's actually someone that they can look to and see as an example for that, of that being real, right? And, and for so long, we, we didn't, we haven't had that, right? We, we, we're still accomplishing first, which on the one hand is, again, something to celebrate during Women's History Month and, you know, breaking the glass ceiling and all that. But at a certain point, it's also like, let's also just uh, recognize how embarrassing and shameful it is that it has taken this long for us to still be <laughs> accomplishing first, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, on that topic, we still have not elected a female president. So she has this aspiration. And as much as we can look to, you know, the first um, woman vice president that we've elected or other women in, you know, these leadership positions, we still haven't, you know, we're, we're still not in all spaces in the way that we need to be and that I hope to show my kids in terms of what's possible for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I love that, what you said about your kids, how like if they see it and, or if they feel that they can do that, you know, I hope my daughter's the same way, you know, they have such beautiful imaginations, but also, you know, they, they do, they soak things in like that. And they're like, I love how you said that your daughter could see herself and, yeah. you know, being an astronaut or, you know, president, it, it's such a beautiful thing. And I think it's so true that we just need to keep going forward and, you know, fighting for what we want and what we should see in this country. So that's, I love that. So thank you. Um, tell us about, you know, your upbringing a little bit, you know, you grew up around such strong, powerful women. Talk to us about, about that and some things you learned. Yeah, I now I think kind of as a parent and also just as an adult realize uh, what a unique family I grew up in. And I, I've come to sort of realize that over time in that when I was living in it and when I was a young, you know, in my, um, you know, younger years growing up in that um, home, it's all I knew, like that was normal to me. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've joked that like the idea of men in power and men like doing things in the world, that was kind of foreign to me because all I saw was like incredible, powerful women yeah. doing that. And it was really my worldview. I'm like, it's, you know, it's like the opening scene of the uh, Wonder Woman movie <laughs> where it's like this all female, you know, sovereign island nation where they're like running around helping each other and saving the world. And like, that's literally as a child, like that's what it looked like to me. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, everything I saw. And I had a front row seat to it. So I think it, it was really, and I, when I think about that experience and now with my raising, you know, my, my own family and really feeling a responsibility to like figure out how to pass that stuff on, even though, you know, our circumstances are different. We, I joke that we like let a few men in along the way, they're still outnumbered, but you know, <laughs> that was so formative for me. And it was really, they were leading by example. Right. And it was my mom, my grandmother and my aunt. And, uh, it was, it's this idea of it, you know, being normalized. Right. I, I wrote a book about, um, female ambition and a central message is like just normalizing it. Right. And, and that not being a negative thing and being something that we celebrate, you know, not just during women's history month, but all the time. Right. And, 
that's, that's again, the household I grew up in. And now it's about, you know, thinking, how do I carry that, you know, legacy and those lessons on in my own family and with my, with my two girls now. Right. And, um, it was so formative for me, not only in sort of my just feminism and, you know, that sort of perspective being in my DNA, but also through the lens of activism and social justice and in particular racial justice. My grandmother was in the civil rights movement. My mom and aunt um, have both done, you know, racial justice work through um, public interest law, seeing lawyers, right. And, and female lawyers that were doing this incredible, you know, uh, social change work is something that was really uh, informative for me to see that. And, uh, you know, I, I ended up now kind of taking a different path. I did go to law school. I followed in their footsteps. But what I've learned as well is that, you know, each of us can play a role in our own unique way. Right. And, and uh, for some people that might be running for office, it might be, uh, you know, working at the ACLU, which is what, you know, my mom did, um, among many other, you know, uh, ways in which she, you know, showed up in her activism. And now I'm seeing that, you know, you can do it through entrepreneurship. You can do it in your everyday life. That that's really, I think another key message is just that no matter how small, right? Like each of us can play a role and it's about showing up with that intention. And again, the, that, that I was raised with, not only to know that I had the, the power to make a difference from wherever I was, but that I had a responsibility and that I had to you know, carry that duty of always asking why or what can I do or how can I, you know, um, make make an impact no matter how small, no matter where I am. And it's been really just gratifying and fun in some ways for me to feel like I'm I'm really kind of like discovering what I think is my true, you know, passion and 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 skill, which is around you know um, creativity and thinking about bringing a creative creative lens to what we're doing around entrepreneurship and um, building a brand, right? And, and thinking about community and audience and um, content, right? Like creating accessible, you know, short form content for people to learn about issues and to raise awareness. And I'm just uh, grateful that I now have the opportunity to really explore, you know, other ways that I can sort of bring my unique perspective, creative skills to the table and think about that in the context of of equity work, right? And and ultimately, I think each of us can can do that and play that role. Yeah, I think that's so incredible and so inspiring how all the women in your life have, you know, even if they're different paths, they've done such incredible work. And even now you bringing up the creative side of how you can use those talents. And I mean, just seeing some of your guys' short uh, form videos on social media. I mean, like there are days where I see that stuff and I'm like, dang, that just hit real hard. Like I totally relate to that or, you know, it's so true. Like there are so many different avenues you can take and really, um, help, you know, women right now and just like down the road and, um, just super inspiring. So that's really cool. I also come from a family of all women. So when you brought up the Wonder Woman thing, I just feel like it's so true. Like when I was younger, sometimes it was like, I felt like it's my mom and my sisters and me like against the world, like, you know, it's so I love that. Are you, yeah. you said you have a daughter. How old is your daughter? Oh, I'm seven months pregnant. Oh, cool. uh, and I'm, <laughs> I'm having a daughter in May. So oh. I'm saying like, I hope that she just, you know, the work that you're doing right now, I can talk about it with her and show her all the things that we were trying to do before she was born, but are going to continue to do. Um, and I hope that it's just, you know, when she's older, it's, we're not even a better place. Right. Oh, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, I think all the time about, you know, not only as a parent, but again, the next generation and what world we are creating and leaving, you know, for them and, and hoping, you know, I, I think we're not gonna be able to solve all of these, you know, problems in <laughs> one generation, but <laughs> um, I do hope that it's better, you know, and I think all yeah. of us can, can be a part of that. Um, I love that. I mean, that's just so special. And um, you wearing the shirt reminds me, there's just so many over the years now with Phenomenal where women, you know, will send us photos of them wearing the shirts and, and special moments. And uh, so many people will wear the t-shirt, like going into labor yeah. or like leaving the hospital and talk about it as something that gives them sort of strength and, you know, a feeling of almost like armor and like ready to go oh. in and have a 
your whatever you're doing. And I just, I love that. So I was actually, that's funny you said that because I was like, gosh, it's just so soft and it's so nice. Like <laughs> I was like thinking, I was like, this could be actually a great thing to leave the hospital in. Like, exactly. <laughs> after. Yeah. So yeah. I love that you just said that. That's so funny. I thought about it literally like not that long ago when I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're getting close. So yeah, thinking about your, uh, you know, hospital bag and what you want to bring. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, leading into the next question, you know, I've noticed that you gained just some amazing support from notable faces. You know, I remember seeing Jessica Alba and, you know, Tracy Ross. I think I saw Kim Kardashian on her story and now Demi Lovato. I mean, it's just so inspiring to see and just to see everyone or women, on that level coming together and supporting the work you guys are doing at Phenomenal. Um, and just with everything going on in our country, uh, talk to us, what's next for Phenomenal? Do you have anything you could share with us? Or I don't even know if you can share that with us, but um, yeah, yeah, what's next? We're doing a lot. Uh, you mentioned Demi Lovato. We just, was it last week? Like each week is still a blur. Every day is still a blur. I think it was just last week. We launched a campaign with her specifically around the vaccine. It's called Provaxer and it's all about creating, you know, trust and transparency around the safety of the vaccine, recognizing that uh, black and brown communities have been hit hardest by COVID uh, and also, you know, are disproportionately affected in terms of, um, you know, not having access to vital information about the vaccine, how to access it, right? And so really thinking again about equity issues um, both in access to information and in, in distrib distribution of the vaccine. Um, so I'm really proud of that one. And I think it's an, a good example of our ability to really, you know, tap into a moment, right. And, and understand sort of how people are feeling and, and what folks are talking about and thinking about, um, and then drawing attention to, you know, equity issues that they may, that may not be getting attention or that they, you know, sort of mainstream mass audiences may not be focusing on, right. Such as, the disproportionate effect this has had on, on black and brown communities. So super thankful to, you know, Demi, she's a, a another great example of someone who, you know, has used her, her talents literally and, and platform to do anything that she can, you know, the influence that she has to, um, to speak up, to raise money for organizations, to, you know, raise awareness around a variety of issues. And um, she's just been an incredible partner in, in that work for us. It's in a uh, partnership with also Higher Heights, a longtime partner of ours, uh, which is an organization that focuses specifically on building uh, power and leadership and voice in the Black community with through the leadership of Black women. So I'm really proud of that as well. We, gosh, next week we're launching a new campaign. I don't think I am allowed to talk about that one. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, we just launched a partnership with Netflix and uh, Bridgerton which was really, yeah, exciting and, uh, was a big hit. So we're going to be doing more on that, um, also coming soon. And, and that kind of segues into us, you know, doing more on the content side, we've done, you know, a lot through apparel and, uh, but really think of ourselves as a media company, right? So it's, it's, it's really distributing messages, raising awareness around issues, causes, um, experiences, culture of underrepresented communities, through a variety of platforms, you know, yes, through hoodies and apparel, but also, you know, thinking about content community and, and really growing our, you know, footprint and work in those areas. We, um, at the end of last year and actually, gosh, I'm like, again, everything, it just feels like on the one hand, it feels like it's been like each week feels like 10 years long. And then on the other, <laughs> like, oh, that was just a month ago. Um, we were doing some work around the, you know, Georgia Senate runoffs, uh, related to our expanding our, our content work. So, um, you know, thinking about that, there's obviously just such a crisis right now or continuing rather. I mean, it, we've, it, it's been going on for at least a year now um, around anti-Asian racism and hate crimes and, and violence, which obviously is just so um, concerning. And um, the Asian community is just hurting so much right now. And so we're thinking about, you know, how we can uh, support the, the work of, again, activists and, and organizers who are um, you know, protecting people's civil rights and have been doing this work for a long time in terms of um, supporting the Asian community. Um, we launched actually, when this all really started happening a, a whole year ago, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, right when we were hearing racial slurs and other, um, you know, uh, racist language like China virus and things like that, we <clears throat> relaunched our Phenomenally Asian campaign. And it's all about 
you know, recognizing that this is a, a painful, you know, not positive thing that this community is experiencing, but, um, you know, raising awareness around that in a way that is still lifting up that community, right? And, and that's the whole essence of um, doing it through that message of Phenomenally Asian, right? And uh, so, yeah, now we're, we're working on that, a, a bunch of stuff behind the scenes, um, trying to, you know, support that work and, and play whatever role we can. That's incredible. Um, particularly just, you know, thinking of the Asian community, you know, I'm part Filipino and it's just something that I've been constantly thinking about, like my mom who um, is 50% Filipino and just, she lives in the Bay area and, you know, I'm always just checking in on her and making sure she knows what's like really going on and just trying to keep, you know, everyone in my family aware of, you know, what's going on because as my mom and as she gets older, sometimes she's not watching the news all the time or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a diff if there's a disconnect there sometimes. So I think it's just so important that you guys are, you know, talking about those things for sure. And everything else you guys are doing, of course, as well. I love what the Phenomenal Media Fund supports. So here at JD Sports and Finish Line, we of course want to keep supporting what you guys are doing. Um, and we want to make a donation of $20,000 to the wow. Phenomenal Media Fund. Um, again, just incredible work. And I love the content personally. And I know that you guys have amazing followers as well. Like I see the comments and I'm just like, I feel the same way. Like this is so good, <laughs> you know, and, or, you know, it brings awareness, um, to something really important or something that, you know, someone can repost to spread to their audience or, you know, and it's just like a, an effect that it has on people. So, uh, yeah, we're so happy that we could make that donation for you guys. And we know it's going to go somewhere that's really important. So, yeah. yes, thank you. That means the world. And, um, we're so thankful for your support. The phenomenal media fund builds on, you know, everything we just talked about, but particularly, <clears throat> excuse me, focusing on raising awareness around issues and experiences of unrepresented communities. And I'm really proud of um, the work that we've done already with a lot of other nonprofit partners like Higher Heights. Um, we did last, almost a year ago, last August, we did um, an incredible campaign around the um, anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, but doing it through, again, the, the lens and perspective and celebration of um, Black women and, and Black female leadership. And so that's an example of, you know, some of the work that we've done. And um, again, there's just, you know, uh, so much uh, still that I think a lot of us are grappling with, right? We um, got through this election. I think maybe almost naively, some people thought like, oh, it'll all get, you know, better. And in some ways, yes, we're, we have, you know, we're getting, we just passed this historic relief bill and we are finally getting, you know, relief to, to people in need. But, you know, a lot of this other stuff, it, it started well before, you know, Trump was elected. Um, and so these issues around white supremacy and, you know, gun violence and um, rising authoritarianism. And I mean, I, the list goes on and on and on. There's just so much to do. And I'm just uh, proud that, you know, again, we can play a role no matter how small and bringing our, you know, sort of creative perspective and, and community um, to the table um, to, to support that work that's happening on the ground. Yeah, thank you so much for all the work you and your team are doing. Um, you know, everyone who's watching, make sure you follow Mina and Phenomenal uh, and check out all the things that they're supporting and bringing awareness to all important topics, but also great content. So who doesn't love some great content? Um, we also have another special loyalty status program going on right now. You have a chance to win Mina's t-shirt, this phenomenal woman t-shirt, um, and some other really great goodies that we put together for our loyalty members. So make sure you check out our blog and social media channels for that. Um, and that about wraps it up. Mina, thank you again um, for your time. And yeah, it's been a pleasure working with your team. I'm so glad we, we got this done. You know, I'm so happy we got to have you on here. Yeah, no, thank you so much for reaching out and for giving me the opportunity and bringing me into your community. I'm a big fan and it was super fun um, doing this and I hope that we can do more together. And thanks also just for, you know, the work that you're doing hosting events like this. I think it's just yeah. another example of, you know, the power of community and conversation and dialogue uh, that is so essential for all of us, especially in this moment where, you know, we're all online and looking for ways to connect and engage. And so thank you for, for all you're doing.
Yeah, of course. Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Um, and we will see you next time on Community Voices. See you thank later. you. Thank you.